Ben back from Living Survivalist. In a previous video, we looked at my get home bag. You gave me some great recommendations on this and some things that I'm definitely gonna change on that. We also looked at my uh, day pack, my uh, Hidden Woodsman EDC Day Ruck. So we looked at uh, some of the contents in that. But today, we are going to be taking a look at the bug out roll and what I have in this. And this is going to be a little bit of a different video today because I'm going to rely on you guys to hopefully um, help me fill the rest of the contents in this bag. Um, I have it loaded up uh, generally how I like it. I had it loaded up before. I've changed the contents as I do with many different kits. Um, so we're going to take a look at what I currently have in here and then we definitely want to, I definitely want to have some comments from you guys uh, on what else I should add to this kit. Sort of help me complete the kit. Um, now these past few videos, the get home bag video, the, the EDC uh, bushcraft video have been uh, getting a lot of views. So you guys, um, you know, seem to like these type videos. I'm going to try to read your questions in chat. Uh, what's up Tillis from Okinawa? What's up? I'm gonna try to answer you guys in chat, but I'm gonna try to keep going with the video so it makes a good video. What's up Carlos? What's up Sam Lee? Uh, so we're gonna take a look at what's in my bug out roll. Again, I want, uh, you know, feedback on this one. This one's gonna be kind of a community uh, kit here. Um, I have it loaded up. I had it loaded up before, but uh, it's not as full as it used to be. I took some things out and I want to add some things in So let's get going on this bug out roll if you're unfamiliar with the bug out roll This is from Canadian prepper from uh, Nate at the uh, Can Canadian prepper channel He has a website called Canadian preparedness, which I'll link down below uh, Where you guys can get these bug out rolls now. This one is like the the vinyl version um, This one is what's up from Poland this one is um, a little bit water resistant. He makes them in nylon and he makes them in several different configurations. So you guys can check out, you know, his website to see that. But this is the one I have. I'm not sure exactly what the model of this is, but it's a, it's a roll. You know, it's something with a very heavy duty uh, grab handle on the top of it. So that, you know, I can, I can just throw this in the car. I can throw it, um, you know, in any type of situation that I have, I can just grab and go with this. Uh, definitely a good piece of kit, Alan, that's for sure. I can just grab and go with this. So, um, you know, with the addition of the things that I already have in my vehicle, because the vehicle's probably gonna be your most, you know, your vehicle's probably gonna be your bug out vehicle. If you had to bug out, let's say you had a fire, let's say you had an earthquake, let's say you had a tornado, a flood, anything that affected you know where you stay at home because i'm a firm believer in bugging in not bugging out because bugging in you have all your preps in place and obviously shelter in place would be the you know best case scenario but if i had to leave the home you know this is something that would come with me along with my other kits i plan on doing a three-day um uh backpack video as well some of you have asked for that but uh, let's take a look at what I have inside my bug out roll. So this is what it looks like when it's all clipped and strapped up. It's a nice little sort of duffel bag or briefcase type um, bag that you can quickly take with you. Um, again, these have different configurations, but the, the way that they work is, is pretty similar. Um, so I'll, I'll just unclip everything. Everything is real high quality um, with the, the buckles and the stitching. And then this thing just practically, practically just rolls out. And you have a ton of different options within this roll. Now this one has um, the clear, uh, all the clear um, zipped compartments in here. Again, some of his bug out rolls are a little bit different depending on what you want to do. But this one basically... Um, has all the clear compartments is what I like about it. And then it also has this heavy duty vi uh, vinyl on it, which is what I like about it. So it's something that I can just keep a lot of gear in. 
I can take this, you know, with me. If I had to exit my house or something, I can throw this in the vehicle and have a ton of gear with me. Now you're going to see that it's not fully loaded. So again, I'm counting on you guys to help me, um, you know, load the rest of this kit up with gear that I, um, with gear that you guys recommend. So it, yeah, it stretches the entire uh, table here. This one does not zip off in different compartments. Some of, some of his do zip off in separate compartments. So let's say you had like a tool compartment, you could zip that off, take that you know around camp, you could hang this up at camp, you could take those off. What's up Stuart's prepping? You could take those off and you could use them in different you know implements in camp. This one, you can't detach any of the compartments but I like it because it's just a unified roll. I can see all the contents in this thing and I can, uh, I can go from there with what I need. So we're gonna start down from the bottom. This will probably be a little shorter video today um, just because, you know, there's, uh, again, uh, I, I don't have this thing fully loaded, but we're gonna start at the bottom here. And thanks everybody for joining. I'm gonna do a giveaway on the forums. Link to my forums will be below in the um, description if you guys want to check that out sign up on the forums you'll be entered for a giveaway um, it's living survival.tv if you want to go there now or go there after the video and sign up that'd be awesome um, really cool forums really cool people there I'm trying to get that thing going yes this is the pack roll from canadian prepper um, so let's go through what i have in it again all the compartments are clear and when Nate designed these, he designed these with really high quality, um, you know, vinyl and materials. So these um, clear compartments are really high quality. They're really thick. They're not gonna crack on you. They're not gonna turn yellow on you. I've had this for quite a while. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's still in great condition. It's something that I can grab if I had to exit the household, for example. And you can load these up in all different ways. I just have this loaded up as sort of a bug out roll. Gotta open a, uh, a little go-gurt for my daughter here. There you go. Um, these would be great for um, anything. So you could load these up as like a, sur uh, or a survival kit, which is kind of what I have it loaded up um, as now. You could load it up as a full-blown med kit. You could load it up as a full-blown, you know, range kit where you had ammo and all sorts of stuff in here. You know, the, the sky's the limit on what you can do to configure this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the compartments that I have and we'll look at what I have in each one. So this bottom compartment, the very bottom compartment here, uh, is my tool compartment. So in here, I have a silky saw. Uh, this is the Big Boy 2000, I believe. It fits perfectly in here. Stuart, you have one, that's awesome. So that fits perfectly in there. <clears throat> and then I also have a Mora knife. Uh, what's up, Sergeant? I have a Mora knife in here. This is just the companion, I believe. Uh, yeah, just a companion knife. Never can go wrong with a, with a cheap Mora. Throw these in all your kits. Never can go wrong with that. And then I believe I have a BK-7 in here. This is a, um, a Becker BK-7. Just a nice fixed blade. I've had the BK-9. I've had multiple BK-7s. I've had all sorts of Becker knives from K-Bar. And, uh, they make really good survival knives. Really good knives for kits. They're not overly expensive, so, you know, although I take my expensive bushcraft uh, knives and things with me on my, uh, in my bushcraft kit, um, you know, they're not overly expensive. What's up, Carlos, with the $10 donation? If you guys want to donate, there's a super chat button down below. Man, it helps me out incredibly with this YouTube crap going on where they're lowering views, they're lowering uh, monetization. Thank you so much, Carlos. So I have just three tools in this bottom kit. You know, with this with this tool combo right here, you really can't go wrong. You know, you have a, a nice fixed blade here that you can baton down wood. You can get through about anything. You have a nice saw that you can saw up a ton of wood with, and then you have a nice little small fixed blade. So you can, you know, fire prep with that. You can, you know, make stakes. You can uh, make uh, uh, different type of shelter materials, food prep. You can do all sorts of stuff with uh with the little more knife so that's what i have in this compartment here i just have the becker bk7 
I don't believe a BK9 fits, so that's why I went with the, the 7. I do have the 9 as well. And then I have a saw, and then I just have the little um, Mora knife in here. Let's move on up to the next uh, pouch here. And thanks all everybody for joining. We're over 30 people now. Uh, what's up, Alan? If I didn't say, hey, what's up before? So let's move up to the next section here. I just have a ton of paracord. This is just some orange paracord. This kit is not a covert kit. It's not a gray man kit. It's just something that I would take, you know, with me if you wanted to get rescued, you want to have high visibility. So I went with orange paracord, and I think this is at least 100 feet uh, here of paracord. So, you know, you guys know all different sorts of uses uh, for that. And then I have this little shovel. Um, it's a little tiny little shovel. I got this off Amazon. I actually was going to do a review on this, but it was so tiny that uh, I was like, man, I got screwed. But it actually is a decent shovel. You know, it locks up really tight. Um, would I take this, you know, uh, you know, out camping or something like that? Probably not. But, you know, for digging small holes, um, doing things like that, it also has a little spade on it that you can loosen this up. Um, it came with a little carrying pouch, but it actually fits perfectly in the bug out roll. Um, so that's where I keep it. You know, I have a larger shovel in my car for winter time for digging out in case I got stuck or something like that. Um, but this little guy here works perfect. Uh, <laughs> it's adorable. You're right. It works perfect for, um, in this, uh, kit. So that's where I have it. So let's load that back up, load our little adorable and it also has a compass on it, believe it or not. Wow. So, you know, if you're lost, you can definitely rely on that compass on the back of this little Amazon shovel that I bought. No pun intended. All right, so let's load that back up. <clears throat> All these zippers are really high quality. The zips are like number, I have no idea what number they are, but they're YKK, they're, you know, they're high quality zips. So then in the next compartment here, I have my shelter components. So I have a Bushcraft USA um, tarp. This is a five by seven tarp. It's orange. So again, I'm not trying to go covert here. I'm not trying to go gray man. Um, so this is an orange, you know, just an orange tarp. Definitely helpful for um, uh, shelter, but also helpful for signaling. So if you had to, uh, you know, use it to, to, to do that, you could. So that's why I leave it in here. And then on the other side, I have a bunch of sleeping bag warmers. These are from Ignit, um, Ignit, the company Ignic. Um, I have sleeping bag warmers. I have tablet warmers. I have smartphone, smartphone warmers. I have uh, hand warmers. I have a ton of different things uh, from them. But these are the sleeping bag warmers. So basically, I think it comes with uh, two of them. And they're, they're big. So you can put one at the foot end, one at, you know, maybe your chest and uh, that'll keep you warm. So you could use this tarp here as a makeshift uh, sleeping bag if you had to, you know, uh, you know, get on the ground, put this over you, put a couple of these sleeping bag warmers in here uh, and that would work well. And I actually find that that probably is a better situation than having a bivy. You know, a lot of those bivvies that you buy um, that you can put in these little kits just suck. You know, they just, they just suck. They're, they're, they'll break down after one use. They're basically like a Mylar bag, you know, just taped together or glued together as a uh, sleeping bag and they just suck. So I'd rather have a decent tarp that I could wrap up in and put some of these uh, warmers in and, uh, and, and be good, you know, be warm. And then of course, you know, warmers this time, this time of year when it's cold, warmers, you know, go a long way so I have these things everywhere and all my kits cars and glove boxes everything like that Alan to answer your question um this company Ignic they sent me a product to review I didn't end up reviewing it so if that tells you anything I don't know um but they're basically like hot hands so um what I like though is that they do make the different sizes um so I do have the hand warmers from this company. They're a little more expensive than the hot hands. So I'd probably buy the hot hands um, before I'd buy these. But they, what's cool is they do have these in larger sizes. So if you need something for, uh, and they have adhesive on them. 
but you can use the to toe warmers from um, Hot Hands as well. Like a lot of times on my cameras or my cell phone, I'll put the to uh, toe warmers on that have the adhesive on the back or just the little sticky stuff to, to help my batteries last a little longer. But I thought these were cool. They're the sleeping bag heaters. So that's what I keep in there. This is sort of my shelter component here instead of a bivy. Uh, moving on up to the next uh, next slot here, I have a uh, Catadyne um, water filter. So water filter, and what's nice about this is this is generally something I'm going to take with the family, right? So I'm not going to be solo. If I was solo, I'd just use my get home bag, but I'm generally probably not going to be solo with this kit. This is going to be something if we all had to evacuate you know, I'm going to take this. Now, we do all have our individual kits. We have three-day bags. We have bug-out bags. I'm going to do videos on those as well. But this is just kind of a catch-all for a lot of gear in a small package that you could take and run with. So, this is the Catadyne um, water filter. It's basically just a three-liter three liter uh, bladder. And I have one of these. Um, this is the Catadyne B-Free, I believe. This screws onto here. So I can fill this up really easy, any lake or, uh, river, lake, or stream. Fill that up. You have a hose in here as well and some uh, clips to hook it to a tree. This thing, in my opinion, for a hollow fiber filter is probably the best you can get. Um, you can get the Sawyers, yeah, but you're going to be filling up those little bags. Um, of course, you can get the Sawyer and you can drink from it. Um, I actually used to have a Sawyer in this kit, but I took it out in, in, um, and replaced it with this Catadyne 3 liter filter. So if I need water, I can find one water source and I can fill this up with 3 liters of water and we can filter that into our bottles, into our cups, you know, anything that we have, we can filter that um, down. So I felt that that was like probably a better solution than just having a Sawyer in here and having to deal with that. You know, you want to deal with as least stress as possible when you're on the run, when you're on the go, when you have to find a spot to shelter. Um, and this is something that will help you do that. Then on the other side, I have uh, just one of these um, UCO candle lanterns. So this is just one of their candle lanterns that pops out and you put the little, um, put the candles in it. So I have the candle lantern itself in the uh, neoprene carry case which keeps it nice and protected, keeps that glass from breaking. And then I have um, three nine hour candles here. So if I had to set up a little shelter or something, even in the vehicle, you know, with the window cracked, I could set this up and have light and have ambience and have just a calming effect, which is goes a long way in a survival situation. Or I could use it, you know, um, as a heat source. You can use it with Mylar blankets as a heat source. So, um, that's what I have in there. I use them both. The B Free is probably the better for the Bob. B Free, like the B Free filter is awesome. I'd say it's probably better than any other hollow fiber filter out there. You know, of course, the Grail water filter does, um, you know, it does chemicals. It does um, the everything that a hollow fi fiber filter does. So the bacteria, um, it just does so much. So I use this most of the time. But with any hollow fiber filter, you have to be careful in the winter time. If it freezes, it's not going to work as good. So let's move on. And uh, getting into the next sections is where I need your help. You know, you guys tell me what I, what else I should put in here. Uh, next section here, I have just electronics. Um, again, if you can see a pattern here, I kind of have uh, tools in this bottom part. I have shelter making supplies with the shovel and the paracord. I have my shelter and my heating supplies. Um, what's up, Caitlin? Uh, Caitlin, yep. And then I have uh, water filtration and some lighting. And then we'll get into the electronic section here. So I just have, right now, I just have this little RAV Power solar powered um, uh, battery charger. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's just a little, let me see, it's a 1500 or it's a 15,000 milliamp. So it's, it's got a decent amount of power in it and it's solar powered, which is cool. Um, and what's really cool is that I've had this thing in this bug out bag for probably two years now. And if I click the button, you can see it's still at three dots. It, four dots is all the way up, but I've had this in there for three years and I haven't charged it. 
So that's that's going a long way to say, you know, uh, that this product is probably a pretty decent product. Um, if I can leave something battery powered or something electronic in a kit for three plus years and it still has three bars on it, that's why I leave it in here. And it is useful because I can leave this out in the sun. I could get a trickle charge on a cell phone. I can get a trickle charge on a, on a flashlight. Um, it does actually have a light on it. I have no idea how to operate the light. Maybe you hold it down. Yep, you hold it down. So it does have a light on it as well, which makes it multi-purpose, which is cool. This is a cool little item. I don't know if they sell it anymore, but it's RAV power. And, you know, I have it and it just sits in here and it's, you know, it's, I've never needed to charge it, which is super cool. And so on the other side here, I just have a headlamp. Never can go wrong with the headlamp. Um, multiple headlamps, maybe. Just a Streamlight uh, headlamp. And then I have this little Streamlight flashlight. I may be changing this stuff up. Um, but this is a little Streamlight flashlight that you can use not only as a flashlight, but it also has a little cone on it. So this would be good, maybe not, not so much maybe in this bug out bag, but for a car kit, this would probably be good because um, it, it illuminates this cone and then you could, you know, ward off traffic with it or something like that. If there was an accident, you know, you could usher people one way or the other. So a couple, couple little Streamlight products that I had that I just threw in here again with the rest of this kit, I'm kind of asking for recommendations. Let's move on to the next uh, section of the uh, bag here. I have uh, two of these Esbit emergency stoves, which are great, and I have a ton of the extra uh, fuel here. These things stink, man. I can smell them right here. I hate the smell of these things. If you guys can relate, leave me a comment below. But anyway, I have two of these emergency stoves. Basically, these emergency stoves, you just, uh, you you bend them into shape and then you use the little uh, fire starter here and you can cook with them. So they're, they're a way to um, boil water if you needed pure water or if you needed to uh, cook some food, there's a way to do that. On this side, this is gonna be my fire, uh, sort of my fire kit here. I have two of the brand new fire sticks from Pearl Camp Tech. If you haven't checked out Pearl Camp Tech, definitely check them out, they're a channel sponsor. Um, I'll put links below to them and then I have a lighter and then I have some uh, UCO matches, the, uh, the strike in, they're not strike anywhere matches, but they're the, the waterproof matches so you can strike them and they work in snow and everything like that. Next up, I have, I think what I'm gonna be building as my food kit here. Um, so I have a bunch of these Millennium Bars. Now I said on my last video that these taste like crap and they do. The ones that we tried, I think they were like vanilla or something like that. Yeah, the fishy smell, you know what I'm talking about. All guys have maybe smelled that before. Um, these new Millennium Bars, um, the ones that I tasted, the vanilla ones, just flat out sucked but i got a lot of comments on my last video saying that these are the best in the business now i have had um tack bars and those actually taste like a chocolate chip cookie when you're eating them um so you know <laughs> those are great i don't have any tack bars so i went with these i bought these off amazon um so maybe the other flavors are better i don't know um and then I have some 1,000 milligram vitamin C supplements, strawberry kiwi. These are something that you could just put in water and, you know, drink and have a little energy, have a little supplement. These are going to give you a little bit of energy. I maybe want to put some MR MREs in here. You know, again, I am going with my family. So I would want to have, you know, we have, I have two girls and a girlfriend. So four of us, you know, I can deal with the shelter and, you know, fire and all that with the four of us, but maybe some more food for sure. So this is empty. Definitely probably want to put some more food in there. And then the only thing else that I have in here is a bear bowl. Um, this fits perfectly in here. The bear bowls, I don't know if they're sold anymore, but they, um, but it fits perfectly in here. So this is something that I could use in addition to the Esbit stove to boil water. Um, for food or to boil water to drink um, or to cook food in so this basically just flips out like this and you um, let's see if I remember how to do this so you just flip this up and these two all the corners fold in over the top here and they just 
button like that. So let's see, this this one folds over. I don't even know where the, oh, the button is, the strap. So yep, these all work a little different, the different sizes. But basically then you have a pot with the uh, metal on the bottom that you can cook on. I've used these over an open flame. I've used them over camp stoves. They work great. So you can boil water in these. These are very cool because they pack down flat because obviously I can't get a, you know, canteen in here. I can't get a, um, you know, a canteen cup or anything like that. I can't get a pot um, into this bug out roll. So being able to have this and being able to boil water and being able to cook food um, in this bug out roll, uh, these just seem to be the best option going. So this is a um, bear bowl. They come in different sizes. Again, this is the small. The large, I'm not sure. I don't think it fits in these small cavities here, but this one definitely does, and that's all I need. I can boil, you know, water, multiple water at a time, whatever, and um, and and uh, make that work. So I have, you know, some more fire stuff to put in here. I want to put a ferro rod in here, maybe some more tinder. I want to put some more food in here. Another thing is medical. Um, I thought about putting like one of these little med kits in here. Um, you know just trying to get it in there but it's it's a little bit too big for this bug out roll in the last video i showed you guys my med kits uh, my trauma kits which i'm going to do an individual video on so this is my med kit for just everyday uses this is my range bag uh, med kit this is just my day hike med kit now even that was a little bit too thick to fit in here um, and then of course I have a tourniquet, so I probably want to put that in here as well. So if you guys got any suggestions on, I want to do a trauma dressing, I want to do some gauze, and yeah, I could, I could just put that stuff individually in here. Um, but I probably want to make it so that I can grab it and go, right? Like I don't want it to be where I'm having to unroll this whole roll and then I'm grabbing one gauze out at a time. I'd rather have a kit like this that I could put in here and 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 take it on the go at one point so if you guys have any recommendations on small um, pouches that you guys have seen for medical that i could put some gauze in put a trauma dressing in put you know some sea locks in something like that uh, then definitely let me know and i can put that um, in this kit but you can see i have a few left over uh, yeah a ziploc would work too although it's just not going to be the most durable i thought about that I was gonna do a Ziploc and just, you know, put the contents in a Ziploc. Thank you so much, Sergeant. Sergeant is a huge fan of the channel. I'm a huge fan of you, bro. Man, thank you so much for that. You guys are awesome. Anybody that's doing super chats, click the dollar sign below. You guys rock. That's why I'm doing these live videos. These live videos seem to get more views than my regular videos these days. So that's absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, you guys can see I have a few extra, you know, odds and ends here that need filling space. So if you guys can recommend something, but all in all, you know, what do you guys think of the Canadian Prepper bug out roll? I think it's a pretty cool setup. You know, you can hang it on a tree, you can hang it on the side of your car. Um, and then again, if you watch the beginning of the video, you know, this thing just, just practically rolls up, man. You can just roll it up. <clears throat> Roll it up and strap it up. And you've got yourself a nice little to-go kit, you know, that you can just set in a corner, set in a closet, set by your shoes, set by your umbrella, set by your keys. And, you know, you got this to go full of kit, no matter how much you guys, you know, fill it up with. You've got a nice survival kit to take with you. So leave me, leave me in the comments. And if you guys would actually... Um, you know these the live chats have comments but they don't show on the video once it posts so if you guys would go back to, to after this post which is usually about 20 minutes after the video it uploads um, and then post your comments there so let me know there that way I can reply and that way you know we can interact on that one other thing I want to show you guys before I go just because it's kind of crazy I just think of this Just got this in from Adventure Mate, and it's crazy. It is a axe saw shovel combo. So it comes with this like sheath on it, which is cool. Um, it's got a magnetic clip here, which is cool. So you just it just magnets like right to itself, 
which is cool. Um, and then on the inside, you have it, uh, an axe. So not the highest quality leather there by any means. So you can pull the axe out and you have basically, well, it's more like a hatchet, I guess, than an axe. But it is very sharp. I took this sheath off the other day and it's very sharp. So you have a axe uh, slash hatchet. You have a hook here for pulling stakes. You have a pommel here for putting in stakes or, or pounding things. So that's one of the uses of this. And then it has multiple other uses, which is crazy. And that's kind of why I wanted to review it. It's got a rubber handle here, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm thinking this thing with the heft of the head here, this thing's gonna chop some wood and we're definitely gonna, gonna uh, check this thing out uh, in a future review. But I just wanted to show, you, show it to you guys because I got it today and it's here. Um, then we can flip up this little uh, handle here. We can push this button and forgive me because I don't know how, how well this thing works yet. But then there's a saw inside and it looks like a pretty aggressive saw. You can see it's not just your basic saw. It looks more like a, a silky saw with the, uh, the different um, edges on it. And then basically you just flip this thing around and you push it in until the button goes. You flip this down and now you've got a saw. So you've got a whole handle here and you've got a saw. Of course, you know, you'd probably want to put your, uh, your sheath back on to your um, axe there, but you've got a saw. So you've got an axe or a hatchet, you've got a saw. And then there's one more component to this, which is crazy. Um, so inside here is a full blown shovel. I mean, when I say full blown shovel, it's a full blown shovel with, you know, the actual bent over ends. So you can actually like stomp on this thing. So you can go ahead and flip this lever up. We can push the button here again. And let me see if I can get this thing out of here without cutting myself because I have no idea how to use it. I just got it. So we can pull this out of here. The uh, hatchet slash saw head. We've got the handle here. We can go ahead and slip this down in here. Flip that down. And then you've got yourself like a freaking brute of a shovel. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of different shovels before. Um, you know, a bunch of different bushcraft shovels and little shovels. But this thing is a freaking brute, man. I can't wait to get this thing out there. And you look how big the head is on that shovel. I mean, it's it's a legit shovel. Let's go back to the adorable shovel. Yeah, you just mentioned it. Let's go back to the adorable shovel. Let me pull this thing out of the bushcraft kit here, or the uh, bug out roll. Let's go back to the Amazon uh, adorable shovel. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've seen in a while. Look at how skimpy this little shit thing is. Excuse my language. But this thing is crap. I, I don't know how much I paid for it on Amazon. I just ordered it just because I wanted a cool little shovel. And it would probably work, you know. It would probably work for some cool stuff. But this here is a legit shovel. And I'm looking forward to uh, reviewing this thing. The handle on it is straight legit. Um... You know, it's got this nice rubberized handle on it. And, uh, yeah, this thing is straight legit. So I'm definitely going to be uh, having an upcoming review on this. I'll get a lot of use out of it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't pack down too small or it doesn't pack down too big. I mean, if you didn't need the shovel component, um, you know, you could definitely just go with the, uh, the saw slash um, uh, hatchet component, which I actually like. I think that's pretty genius. Um, you know, a lot of times they'll store like a shovel or something in the handle and it ends up being just a, a crap, sh uh, a crap saw, um, or crap components, but this thing is heavy duty. I mean, it's got some weight to it. Um, it is pretty heavy duty. It seems to lock in, you know, a lot better than some of those other tools that you see. So we'll see, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give this thing a good test. You guys know, I'll give it an honest test. I'll chop a bunch of wood with this thing. I'll convert it into a saw. And, uh, you know, and, um, but those are the things that I carry, you know, I carry a, uh, I carry an ax, I carry a saw. So if it works just as good as maybe a silky, 
um, you know, length for length. I'm not going to say it's going to work as good as the, the Big Boy 2000, which has double, you know, double the blade. But length for length, if it works, you know, adequately and you've got a, you know, a decent way to chop wood, to split wood, to cut down wood, um, we'll see. So I thought that was cool. I just wanted to show that to you. And the locking mechanism seems pretty straightforward. It seems to lock a little bit better than that Klecker one that I reviewed, the, the one that everybody just calls, you know, a novelty prize, a, you know, something that's, uh, that's not really useful. But this thing does have a genuine pommel on it. I mean, you know, stake puller. It's got a lot of heft to it. So we'll see, you know, and then it does come with this little sheath here. Now I'd probably like rework this. I don't know. Um, maybe something that you could keep in the car. You know, I don't think you're going to take this whole thing. Um, you know, maybe this, yeah, you could take that in your bushcraft pack or your everyday carry pack or your three day pack, whatever. Definitely this, you could take it and you got an ax and you got a saw. So if it works good, then hell yeah, it works good. But the shovel component, which, you know, not everybody uses, not everybody needs, but Fowler did win survival with his little shovel. So, you know, it is a cool concept to have a shovel to dig yourself, um, you know, little uh, fire pits and things like that. And so it is kind of cool that it, it goes all into the sheath. I won't say that this is the highest quality. I mean, this leather is really, really skimpy on here. Um, you know, basically just to hold it in. But it is really heavy duty, like nylon and foam. And then this thing is kind of cool because it just it just latches itself. It's like magnetic and it just like latches itself down there. So maybe for the car, you know, something like this would be cool to have in the vehicle. And then you have all those different options. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, if you guys have ever seen that meme of the guy carrying the huge bug out bag that's like 400 times his size, it's obviously just a meme. You know, I could see something like this being clipped onto the outside of that pack just because it is so, so huge. Um, it does have attachment points here, but you know, again, maybe you're going to attach this to like the seat back in your car. Maybe if you have a tailgate or something, you could, you know, people with the seat back, um, organizers or the, or the tailgate in a Jeep, you know, the Molly system, maybe you could hook this up to something like that and it would be cool, but, uh, we'll see, we'll see how functional the individual tools are in this. I've talked enough about that rambled on enough. I'm becoming like survival on purpose and rambling too much. So that's it for um, the live today. I just want to show you guys the bug out roll. Make sure you go to the video once it uploads and leave your comments because these comments here, although I can see them, I, I don't think I can reply to them. Um, so make sure you wait till this video processes and then go back. Thanks everybody for the super chats and I will see you guys on the next